women and their precarious situations. Welcome to Change the Conversation with the Hopefulist. My name is Wendy McClure, and it's time we had a conversation about living in a patriarchy and how that affects our lives. Together, we can make a difference and change the conversation. Welcome back to Change the Conversation with the Hopefulist. I am so happy to have you here today, and I appreciate your commitment to the cause the cause of all women being free and free to make their own decisions about their own lives. I want you to imagine a situation in where you could actually walk in the dark. You could walk at night by yourself without fear. What do you think that would feel like? They actually did a recent survey of what women would do if men didn't exist. And predominantly, most women said, go for a walk at night. Because not only can we not go for a walk at night and feel safe, but if we do go for a walk at night and we are attacked, then we are blamed for that attack. Why are you putting yourself in a precarious situation? That's what we've been told. That's been the status quo. Don't walk at night. Don't go out alone. Now, doesn't that seem a little unfair? Doesn't that seem a little odd that half the population can't go for a walk at night? Can't go for a jog? So that means that all women who have to work late hours can't come home from work and go for a jog if it's dark. They can't walk to the store to get in a little walk time to grab dinner, grab the ingredients for dinner, because they're told. I mean, we are told if you put yourself in these positions then don't complain when something happens. And think about that for a second. How absurd and insane is that? Saying that it's our fault if we go out in the dark and then are attacked is the same thing as saying if you get into a car accident, it's your fault regardless because you chose to get in the car and drive. It is the same thing. You are blaming somebody for merely living their life, doing the things that they choose to do, the things that they want to do, and you're holding them responsible for something that happens to them. And we have all been conditioned to think this is normal. This is just the way that it is. This is how it's always been. Therefore, we've just always accepted it and thought that that was our duty as a woman, that we had to live in a different way. And it's BS. It's complete and total BS. Because not only do men not have to have these same parameters around the way that they live their lives, they don't even realize the extent of the fear that women face when just going through life. I saw a video of a man talking uh, to one of his girls, his, one of his friends that are, that's a woman one time. They were at a party, and it was late. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning, and she's like, hey, do you mind walking me in, to my car? And he's like, well, okay, but why can't you just walk to your car? And he said she just looked at him like, because I can't just walk to my car. It's something that he never even considered before because he doesn't have to worry about it. This is the situation with all kinds of things when it comes to women and how we live our lives and the decisions that we make each and every day. 
How many of you have actually walked in a parking lot with your key in your hand, ready to use it as a weapon? I know I've done that many times. If I'm coming out of a store at night, even if it's during the day, more so at night, but even if it's during the day and I see somebody coming towards me that gives me a weird feeling, oh, I grab those keys and I have them right in between my fingers and I'm waiting to see if I need to use them. And I hope I don't. I don't know if, how, how much power and force it's going to take to actually use a key as a weapon. But men don't have to do that. They don't even think about it. It's not something that they consider. They just walk around with freedom. They have the freedom to walk around without fear. Women never have that. They've never had it, and we are far, far away from ever achieving it. Imagine if you could go to a bar without worrying that someone will get violent if you reject them or worry that somebody's put something in your drink. You know, women can't go to the bathroom together if they're going to leave their drinks at the bar. So one woman has to stay back and fend off maybe some people who are interested in her that she doesn't really want to talk to. Or they can take their drinks into the bathroom, which, you know, some people have an issue with. They don't like drinks in the bathroom. I get it. But then you lose your spot at the bar. There's all, you know, why can't women have the freedom, the same freedom that men do? And totally take for granted, by the way. They have no idea what we go through. What if you could walk down the street without being looked at like a sex object? There to just please men. To be pleasing to the male gaze. To walk down the street and not have somebody, you know, raise their eyebrows at you. Or I mean, this is not nearly as bad as it used to be. I mean, you know, catcalling was real. Um, I'm sure it still happens from time to time. Uh, but not nearly the way that it has in the past. I mean, you literally could not walk down the street without hearing some sort of objectifying comment from some man. So these are things that would be lovely if women didn't have to worry about, but indeed we do. And I spoke last week about this pastor saying that, you know, if women are going to wear shorts and they get assaulted, it is her fault. And that he, if he is on the jury, will set that man free because men are men. This is what he said. So women aren't allowed to wear shorts? That's too sexual? That men won't be able to control themselves around? Now, let's just examine that for a little bit. You know, we are brought up to believe that we cannot distract the opposite sex. It starts in elementary school when girls' dress is way more scrutinized than boys. Girls are often told that certain articles of clothing are inappropriate and that that's going to be distracting to the boys. Okay, it's just not true. The reason that it's distracting to the boys is because you've told the boys that can be distracting. We're going to get rid of that so it doesn't distract you. So in essence, this teaches boys that if they get distracted, it's not their fault. It's the fault of the person who's doing the distracting. And it teaches girls that we're in charge of how the boys behave. That we are the ones that have to make sure that they stay in line or we're going to be blamed for it. Now, if you, 
you can give this just a little bit deeper thought than you have in the past, you will see how ridiculous this is. And the fact that it starts when we're children is very telling. One, it teaches boys and girls early that it's okay if boys are distracted. It's not their fault. And it teaches girls very early that you have to act a certain way. You have to be a certain way. You have to look a certain way in order to be acceptable. And if you aren't, then most things will be your fault. Right? So this also shows that boys are conditioned to not take responsibility or accountability for their own actions. And it sets women up to have to constantly be on the lookout to be worried about their own behavior, their own appearance, their own the way that they're interacting with people, that they have to be practically perfect or else they're going to be to blame. And again, let's go back to the assault situation where when a woman is assaulted, all of the questions now become about the woman. What were you wearing? How much did you drink? Were you flirting with him? Did you start something and then stop it? Because, again, men cannot control themselves, which, again, yes, they can. Men can control themselves. And if they truly can't, they shouldn't be in charge of anything. If they're in the middle of making a decision about declaration of war and a woman goes by in a sleeveless shirt and they can't concentrate anymore, maybe they shouldn't be making those types of decisions. Do you see how ridiculous it is on the other side? It's ridiculous on both sides. We've just been trained and conditioned to believe this is the way it is. And it is the way it is. It's the way it's been for many, many decades. And we, women, have just accepted it. And I say, no more. No more will we have to curtail our life to be safe. Women also asked during uh, an assault, did you scream? Did you try to get away? These kinds of things. You know, when your body is facing a traumatic situation, you really never know how you're going to react. And you're not going to know until you're in a traumatic situation. I lived in an apartment complex in Philadelphia when I was in, I don't know, my late 20s or my early 30s. And I lived on the top floor and somehow... These kids had gotten up on the roof, and I really wasn't sure what was happening. I figured this all out after the fact, but I'm literally sitting on the couch in my apartment next to a window watching TV, and I can hear somebody. I, I could hear rustling about, but then I hear somebody that's literally sounds like they're right next to my ear that says, I can see you. I'm watching you, and I absolutely froze. I froze in fear. Not particularly proud of that reaction, but it is what it is. That was my response. So no, a lot of times women are not yelling. They're not screaming. They're not trying to get away. You don't know how somebody's going to react in these situations. And the fact that women have to justify where they were, what they were wearing, what they were doing, how much they had to drink is preposterous on its own. Nobody asks to be assaulted. It's not something that anybody wants. The real question is why are men assaulting women and why 
does it seem that every effort is made to let him off the hook for doing it. Precarious situations. We're told to stay out of precarious situations. And that's what sparked this whole conversation was I saw a discussion about the pastor and the comment about the shorts and, you know, a man had responded back. Austin, I'm assuming it's a man, said, I don't agree with setting him free, but women do need to keep themselves out of precarious situations. Why? For our safety? Yes, I agree. For our safety. But we're not inviting attacks because we dare to wear shorts of all things. You know, this was an extremely older gentleman that had made these initial remarks. And I don't know what he's been doing the last 50 years, but that's about how long women have been wearing shorts in public. And again, if you can't control yourself around a woman in, in shorts, I certainly hope you don't go to the beach because you're going to have a real hard time. And that's what I always go back to. When I'm told that men can't resist these urges that they have, that they get so tempted, then why isn't there consistent sexual assaults on the beach? If it were about the fact that you could see most of women's bodies, then there would be constant attacks on the beach, day in, day out, all day long. doesn't happen. You know why? Because men can control themselves. 100%. They have made up this narrative to get them out of trouble, to get the man the most benefit of the doubt. They are putting the blame on women for dressing a certain way, for drinking a certain amount, for talking in a certain way, to get men off the hook. It's that simple. It is that straightforward. Society has made it look like women's fault. Over and over again. Hell, even the name of assault in crimes is geared toward the women. They don't even mention the culprit of the crime. They are calling it Crimes against women, putting all of the focus on the victim and therefore her behavior. They don't even talk about the men. It's like they they don't exist. Because if they don't exist, then they couldn't have done it. This is what we've been conditioned to believe our entire lives. And if we dare to step outside one of these precarious situations or step in to one of these precarious situations. Well, then you asked for it, honey. This is what they're telling us. And the more you think about it, the more outrageous it seriously is. And I'm not saying that every woman needs to go out and start walking at dark in, in the dark. No, no, it is a safety issue. It is still very real. But We need to stop blaming the women who actually want to take a walk at night or go out for a jog. We need to stop saying they shouldn't have been there. We need to say, why did that man grab her off a a jogging trail, assault, and potentially kill her? Those are the questions that we need to be asking. Not trying to figure out how the woman was asking for it. We need to put the focus on the real crime, the crux of the crime, the person who did the assaulting, the person who did the killing. A woman out jogging, how is she asking for anything? I don't even care if she's wearing a bikini. If that's what she feels most comfortable in and the the amount that she gets hot or sweaty and that's what works best for her, that is her choice. Men have to realize that the days of them not being able to control themselves are over. 
that women need to be treated a little bit better in this society. And we're not going to take the blame for everything anymore. I want you to always remember, whenever I talk about this stuff, always remember, this is not your fault. It's never been your fault. We have all been taught to think in this way, the status quo. This is just the way it's always been. It's the status quo. It is time to start questioning the status quo. It is time to start questioning everything. We have all been raised with these beliefs that are utterly and totally ridiculous. And it shows once again how far we are from equality between men and women. Because if women are still being judged and blamed for the fact that they want to go for a walk, How is that fair? How is that equal? It's not. It's just not. So we have been brought up with a ton of different ideals and rules and all kinds of scenarios that benefit men at the expense of women. These men with their assaults are often given leniency or let off the hook because he made a mistake. Look what she was wearing. I mean, how could he have helped himself? You know, remember that um, that case with, uh, I think it was Brock Turner was the swimmer. He was in college and he assaulted a woman that was unconscious behind a dumpster after a party or something. And the judge, I don't know, this was maybe five, ten years ago. It was, it was a while ago. The judge in the case literally said out loud, well, I'd, I'd hate to see this young man's you know, reputation and career be destroyed because of 15 minutes. Why are we worried about the suspect's reputation and life after they did a horrendous, heinous crime? What about the woman? What is her life going to look like for the next 20 years as she has to deal with this? day in, day out, how it's made her feel about life in general, about how she is as a person and how she has not received any justice whatsoever for the fact that she was taken advantage of. She was violated in the most extreme personal way. And the judge didn't even consider her when punishing him. And he got a very light sentence, something like six months. It was ludicrous. And the worst part of it all is the judge didn't think there was anything wrong with what he was saying. They're looking out for the suspects. They're looking out for the men, again, at the expense of women. I'll give you one more example. The nagging housewife. This is the biggest example of patriarchy I can come across. It's the easiest example to get you to see the truth, which is a nagging housewife is actually a man that has been asked repeatedly over and over again to do something, to pitch in, to do his fair share, who refuses, and then they somehow paint the picture of the woman being a nag. They're demonizing the woman because she's asked time and time again, and they just refuse to do it. So we're going to make the woman look bad for complaining about it. That's patriarchy. That even when men are at fault, they're the ones who have ignored the request. They're the ones who have not pitched in. They are the ones that did not do what was expected of them. And if you dare to call them out on it, 
Well, by gosh, you are a nag. You're a nag, and nobody likes a nag. It's not your fault. It's none of our faults. This is the society we have been living under since we were born. And we have to be the ones to start the change. We have to call out these behaviors. We have to call out these hypocrisies. And we have to call out these double standards. And we have to do it for our daughters, for our granddaughters, our nieces, aunts, sisters, mothers, for ourselves. We have to make life better for women in this country. And we can no longer wait for someone else to do it. It is our time to take charge and to start being the ones to make a difference for the women that will follow. It is up to you. And I know you have it in you. I know it's scary at first. I know you don't want to do it. I know that it's frustrating and that it can make you very angry. And people don't want to live that way. They want to just pretend that it's not happening. But where has that gotten us? Where has pretending it's not happening gotten us? It's gotten us a reversal of Roe v. Wade. We've lost the rights to our own body. They're making laws about whether we can travel out of state to receive an abortion. We are having to plead for our lives when there is a situation where our life, the woman's life, may be in danger. And being told that your life as a pregnant person is secondary to the fetus, whether or not that fetus is going to be viable or not. That's what staying silent has gotten us. So, I hope that you can find the courage within you to speak a little louder, to speak a little more often, to do what you can to call out this behavior, to talk about how troubling it is, how ridiculous it is, how nonsensical it is. And just do that when you can. You know, these things that take a lot of courage are difficult. And I know I've done a lot of things in the past year and a half that I have never done before. And at first, I was scared to death. I was scared to death to stand up that first time and say to somebody on the pickleball court, yo, that was a pretty sexist remark. Well, why don't we stop that? And people may feel a certain way about me. I don't care. I like what I'm doing. I'm proud of what I'm doing. I stand up for women. And if you have a problem with that, then I think that's your problem. So if you are curious about how to start taking these steps, to find the courage which will build your confidence to make you continue to do the things that are important for you no matter what people say, please contact me. You can send me an email at thehopefulest1 at gmail.com. Visit my website at hopefulest.com. I have a number of different coaching options that you can look through there. And I, I want to help you so that you can help all of us. I want to help you live a better life. And I want all of us to start standing up for what we really deserve. Because we are stronger together. So I thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate you and thank you for your commitment I am so honored that you continue to tune in week after week. Really, honestly, love it. Thank you so much. So now, go on out there and be badass. I'm always here cheering you on. Thank you for joining me in this conversation. Together, we are better. Please visit my website at hopefulist.com and remember to hit that subscribe or follow button.